Welcome back. We have in our studios Rayford Jackson. Our discussion continues. Uh, quickly, I want to uh, allow you to continue what you were saying before we went on a break on the question of the plea deal. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so you take a plea deal because you try to cut your losses like anything. It's so you would have done something. You would not have been out front, like you said. I wouldn't have been out front. I would have just sat back and just not to be so avid in terms of I was excited about the deal. And oh. I believed in the deal. I thought it was a good deal. I even had a deal with Senegal to partner with them for North How America. How much were you going to be paid? Um, I don't have that in front of me, but I had a two-part deal with Senegal. I was going to be paid monthly as a consultant, and once the facility was built, I was going to be paid still monthly and as a contractor. I was going to be providing several services. I was going to sell them polymer. Okay. I was going to oversee all the janitorial services, tr some of the trucking. So there was a lot, because in the contract that they had, Senegal, they had to spend at least 30% with minority contracts. All right, let's switch the pendulum. Fanchon Stinger, your once upon a time girlfriend, is making all these allegations that you abused her, you threatened uh, to, 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 to eliminate her family. What is your reaction to all these allegations? When I first heard it, I was shocked. Um, and, I, and I was wondering... Why is she saying this? Is someone putting her up to it? Maybe, you know, where is she going from here? Then as I learned that she's doing a tour for domestic violence, maybe I feel, and I've heard so many rumors, maybe it's difficult for her to get back into the, you know, news business. And so I figured that, you know, maybe she felt that Ray's going to prison, he's down, he's looked like the villain, he's been vilified, he's been maligned, his character has been impugned. So maybe this is the thing that I can do in order to resurrect my career, my profession. You've all did it for a very long time. Why do you think she's doing this? I think that she was probably looking for how to explain to the public her role, her relationship. She's seeking decisions. a public vindication? Yes. That's, that's what I think. I think that's the driving force. And then as well, oftentimes when... Again, you're listening to people, you're looking at it. I think there's a lot of emotions involved in this, you know. And so I decided, you know, well, let me come out and maybe set the record straight on some of maybe the wild and absurd allegations. She made the allegation that you actually, she borrowed your money and you took money from her and, you know, basically she did everything for you. Well, Fangin didn't do everything for me because but I was But that's an very, impression. If somebody gives you a loan of $60,000, I mean... Uh, well, Fangin didn't loan me $60,000. And again, a lot of what has happened is so much out there that you would have to really take time to take each accusation or things that she said and really look at them and delve and plumb them and get the actual facts of what really happened. Fangin said she never did business with me. You know, I never was involved in any of Rayford's business deal. I didn't know anything. So Is that true? Well, no, and that's why I said, well, she never did do business with me. Um, we worked together on projects. Um, and again, and so when she says, well, I gave Rayford hundreds of thousands of dollars, she didn't give me hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so, um, again, it takes, you know, time to unravel and look at each one of the things that she says and then address each one and put everything on the table. Are you disappointed with what she's saying? Absolutely. I looked at it from sorts of, of, I tried to look at it from her standpoint. And I was trying to, and I said, well, what would I do if I was in her shoes? Or what would the average person do? And I know Fanchon is trying to, again, um, explain to her viewers, explain to the people, and again, move forward. While Rayford Jackson is going to federal prison, Fanchon Stinger still has life out here. And so I think she's trying to do whatever she can in order to get her back into either the career she was in or on a new career path. Now, with all that she's saying about you, is there something that we don't know about Fanchon Stinger that we need to know? You know, it's interesting you ask. One of the things as I watched her interview, I said, wow, this is the same thing she told me about her ex-husband, which is how Fanchon and I started to get close in the first place. She said she wanted to leave her husband. She said the same thing. She was afraid of him. You know, he's mean. He's abusive. 
And like anybody, I was sympathetic, you know, because my first impression of Panty. And what time is, period are we talking sweet. about here? This was in um, 2003. Okay. And as she and I started to get closer, and then again, eventually he came to talk to me. Who came to talk to you? Her ex-husband. Okay. And he gave me his side, and I was telling him, well, this is what she said, and he was very hurt. And he says, you know, that's not the truth at all. And I think oftentimes, not only Fanchin, but most people when they're trying to live up to uh, a perception or a reputation, and most of us have skeletons in our closet, most of us have weaknesses that we don't want the public or anyone to see. And oftentimes, if you don't address these things properly, then it can send you in a whirlwind and a tailspin. And what you'll end up doing is you'll start doing the things that Fanchon is doing. You'll start bringing other people, throwing false accusations, you know, whatever you can to make yourself look good and to justify, as opposed to just saying, I'm sorry. Did you use her, her influence and status as a media personality to, to, to navigate the political cycles in Detroit? No, not at all. You didn't feel the need to? No. So basically, uh, you are clearly disappointed with what Fanchon is saying. Have you guys talked since throughout this whole investigation? We talked initially a lot in, in, in the beginning, to the point that where when the FBI first approached her, I told her, I said, they had approached me and they said that they would charge you with money laundering or structuring if I didn't agree or go along with them. And so when they approached her, she had come and talked to me. And so I took What did she say to you? The FBI approached me. They were saying that, Ray, that, you know, I'm involved in this, in this investigation. I'm scared. And I said, well, we'll go get you an attorney. So she came to my attorney's office with me, um, Richard Morgan, and we referred an attorney to her. So I was very concerned. I didn't want Fanchon to be persecuted. I, it was devastating to see, for me to see what they had done to her. Now, the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, made it clear, actually, that, uh, in fact, she's not under any investigation. I think that's after the deal that Fanchon made with them because initially, um, as Richard Morgan, my attorney, was going back and forth with them, they eventually revealed to him that she was cooperating and she was going to testify and she had given statements against me. So uh, now, uh, coming back to our initial discussion, what advice do you have for business, other businessmen out there? Um, again, I think that be more abreast of the law. I think whatever you're doing, especially if you're lobbying, if you're working even, you know, for your business, I think the key is to really study the law and understand what's, the, what's a bribe, what's influence peddling, what's um, lobbying, what's the criteria, what can you do, what can't you do. I think with anything, first knowing and having the information, once you have the information, then you can make decisions based on the information. All right. Thank you very much, Rayford Jackson, for coming in. Uh, when we come back, we'll have our roundtable, Leonard Flemings from the Detroit News and Alicia Nails from Wayne State University School of Journalism.